All right. Spoiler talk. So, the LGBTQ stuff wasn't even that bad. Like, a, as I... Nigga. Wasn't even that bad, man. It, it, cold. Yeah, it, was, it wasn't even that terrible. Like, there, there's literally one scene... Well, you have the, um, you know, Brian David Tyrese... Is it Brian Tyree Henry? Either way. I think Brian Tyree Henry. Brian, Ty- Brian, Ty- he- Brian Tyree Henry, who plays Phaistos, uh, he's the guy who's kind of, his power is um, creating technology and like innovation and shit like that. Ben Tyree Henry. Huh? Ben Tyree Henry. Brandon Tyree Henry, okay. Um, Phaistos. Yeah, plays Phaistos. And he has a family in modern day with, um, you know, like, and, and they're in the same sex marriage, mm-hmm. you know. It's him and him and his husband. They have a son together, and there's not even that much going on with them. Like you know, like I am. I acknowledge them for having a gay character in the MCU because it creates diversity, and that's one thing I will credit this movie for. It. it was very diverse with the with the cast and and with these characters. Um, so with him, I didn't really have a problem with it. One because there wasn't really much to have a problem with. Um, you know, there's pretty much one scene with him kissing his husband. I didn't, I didn't have a problem with that when I was watching. I was like, okay, this ain't. I was, I literally turned to you and I was like, so this is what uh, niggas was having a problem with this whole time. This is what niggas been bombing the reviews for. I think, I think, cause I, I, mean, I was expecting to come. Cause I knew, I heard it was coming. I think the fact that um, people had, um, my bad. I think the I think people had a problem because it's the first time we've seen this in the MCU LGBTQ character that's very openly. I know a lot of people say Captain Marvel might be um, gay and stuff like that, and nobody like I guess we don't know for officially, but like and this, Valkyrie as well, Valkyrie as well. But like, this is officially our first gay character in the MCU. Um, the scene I had a no problem with the kissing scene. I don't think it was nothing overdone. I thought it was like a you know basic kissing scene. I was cool with it. Um, no complaints from me. And just him and his family in general. And I thought family. I thought it was. Um, Explain not explain well why he was gay, but like explain well like why he didn't want to lose his family, why his family meant so much to him because the simple fact that he, you know, he created the he engineered a lot of weapons, technology to help mankind evolve. So when the Hiroshima bomb, they even show it when the Hiroshima bomb happened. Hiroshima, he, Hiroshima bomb, yeah, okay, Hiroshima. I, I, yeah, I, I don't know why in my head, you know, go ahead, continue. When the Hiroshima bomb happened and you know everything's destroyed and stuff like that, he's looking around like man. Like, maybe mankind wasn't racist. Like, why did I help create? Like, maybe I'm part of the problem. Like, I've given up on mankind and, and all that. So, like, seeing that now he's in present day and he has his family and this is, like, his main reason for a living and and all that kind of stuff. It made sense to his character. It, made, like, it, it actually made me believe, like, this man really was in love with this, this family. He loved his kid. He loved his husband and stuff like that. So, I was cool with it. I'm glad they gave him backstory as far as a character to show, like, how he, how he had, like, why this meant so much to him. You know what I mean? So, that was dope to me. But I had no problem with that scene. Um, um, I think Ryan Tomeo's... I don't know why. I think people probably just bombed it and try to like, oh, let's just try to sink the LGBTQ and Marvel. You know what I mean? So um, it sucks, but audience score is still high, so that's good. But I enjoyed the I enjoyed the film, and I don't have no problem with that scene at all, personally. Moving on to another controversial scene. There was a set scene, and I'm I'm like saying a set scene. I feel like would be kind of oversimplicate or you know exaggeration of mm-hmm. it because it it wasn't man to me. That shit was just some basic ass, normal ass, fucking, uh, like literally the scene you see uh, Richard Madden, you know, um, Icarus, and Cersei, Gemma Chan, and they're naked, but like you can't even see like their bodies, you just see the top half, like it cuts off right here, and you just see them in missionary, you know, getting their fuck on, and that's just like five seconds, man, five seconds. And motherfuckers over here like, oh my god, like I, I can't believe this is a movie for kids and all that. I, I didn't have a problem with it. And I know I'm not a kid, so but either way, if I had kids, this wouldn't even be a problem for me if I was if I was showing this shit to them. Um you know, I, I was it needed? Was it was it something like like, oh, we gotta have a set scene? No, but I mean if you the since it's in there, I'm not gonna complain about it. I don't I don't have a problem with it. I mean, it did it, it doesn't help, but also at the same time it doesn't hurt the story in a way i don't know 
I know you you had a lot to say about it, motherfucker. So go ahead. I know. You well, that's say. my main reason, right there. Johnny just basically said it for me. He said it right there. Did it help the movie? No. So that's why I said it, just, it was not necessary. I had no problem if it's gonna if you have a sex scene in a movie and it's gonna help evolve the movie. Like Johnny just said, he basically made my point for me. Why I didn't even have to say anything. I like when he talks. Not no, talks but, a you, lot. but hold on, hold on, go hold on. Let me finish. You just, you just talked your whole time. We talked. Okay, go ahead. If you're gonna have a scene like that, first of all, I don't think you should have that in an MCU movie. First of all, I just don't think that because I feel like this is this is still for. We, we're grown. We're adults. DeAndre's 20 plus. I'm 20 plus. We're both older. So we, we can look at that and be okay. You know what I mean? But I'm thinking about 12-year-old, 11-year-old Javante. My parents would have probably covered my eyes. And I don't think your kids have to cover their eyes in a Marvel movie like that for stuff like that. I don't think sexual stuff should be like a thing that you have to cover your eyes for. Like maybe, okay, we have some language here and there. That's fine. Okay, I get that. But like a sex scene is like something like... Marvel's never really touched. It's new, and I. I well, what, what, what about when uh, Tony Stark was uh, messing with old girl? He literally was Man kissing one. her on the bed, and that was it. That was, and they roll off the bed. That was it. That's okay. Uh-huh. But this was actually DeAndre. You can't not lie. This is actually some thrusting with people naked. Two seconds worth of thrusting. It's still sex, DeAndre. You're, 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 this is for ki- this is still for kids, my guy. God, you are tripping. Because yeah, you're not thinking about if you have if you have a child. I don't have no children either. But if you have a child, bro, you want your kids seeing that. You caught your kid watching the movie by themselves. It wouldn't themselves. disturb me if they watched that shit because it's like five seconds and I, I don't think it's, a, trust me, the shit I saw as a kid. That's, you can't use that. that. Not sure everybody's no. parents are cool letting the kids go see that kind of stuff, DeAndre. Okay, but that, and you saw that stuff at home. Hold on, hold on, watching hold on. it with your family, not and, at and the movie go, theater. And, and there's always people, there's always parents where, oh, okay, if, if they have a set scene, I gotta go watch it for myself first to see how it is and then I'll let them watch it. But should, you have, you, watch but it? should you have to do that for a Marvel movie? My, that's what I'm trying to say. You should have to do that for a Marvel movie about superheroes for kids. This ain't DC. See where they do rated R movies. This ain't Watchmen. Watchmen, they're rated R. I get that. This is P13. This ain't rated R. And and to your point, I actually do think it adds to the story. I'm, I'm going to No, you literally said it didn't add to the story. No, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a switch. Oh, now you want to switch actually, up. Now you want to change the back. It, it didn't add because, story. look, I'm going to say this why it didn't add. Because Gemma Chan and or Richard Icarus and Cersei's Cersei. relationship felt. I felt the love right away. It didn't take a sex scene to make me feel, oh, they actually love each other. My girlfriend's the same thing she went saw with us. She agreed said, I didn't really need that. Like, I felt they, we could tell, you could tell they were in love. But sometimes but it, already. Just, it just adds to it. How? Dad, you're literally not making no sense. Let me, ask you, let me ask you this. When you watch Love and Basketball, right? They have that That's, This is not the same, the Andre. Same? That's not made for kids. Oh, my God. This motherfucker here. No. And I didn't need, and that, and that's different because that was that was a whole like taking of Virginia, so like that's a whole different story. I'm not you, don't, you don't think he took care of Virginia in that movie? Tell you, I'm that's, not going that's, that's, that I'm just saying that's they, they are literally they were created, so oh, that's the their but first my time getting their fuck on. That, that I don't care. I don't care to see that. My point is this: we just saw them touch each other, him all like, oh man, like embracing her and just falling in love with her and worshiping her, and then we see them get married. I didn't even have some sex. Yeah, it's show, but it's like it's more of like an artistic. I'm thinking as a director, oh, Andre, a, But this is what I'm saying I'm, that's I'm thinking, fine. I'm thinking. Art- I'm thinking a bit of an artistic standpoint if you're trying to show these characters and the love for her that they have for each other because Loki you kind of I mean I'm, if that's the only reason that means you're yeah, not that good director okay, no because because what I'm saying well damn alright disrespect to I'm not, no I'm not definitely no, I'm but, saying if that's what you're saying you're saying I had to use that for artistic reason I'm saying you need to show no it just adds a little art- art- artistic flavor there's other ways to do it then you don't need to show them having but, sex bro but what you're doing is because in that scene it kind of shows these characters and you know the way they're they're having sex it's like you can type like I don't know when I was watching it like you could tell it was their first time for both of them, it was passionate. It was, you know, you get to actually see the love that these characters have for one another. DeAndre, we've had plenty of, like we had Tony Stark and Pepper Potts. We have to see that kind of stuff. We knew they loved each other. Oh, we had Captain man. America and Peggy Carter. We knew they loved each other. We had all we have characters before that MCU has have loved each other. We have some damn Peter Parker, and they don't have sex. We've had this before. We don't have to have sex to show oh you love each other. No, they did a great job. Chloe did a great job of showing that they had a connection. That they he really cared for her and she cared for him. Right away, we didn't need to have a sex scene. That sex scene was just add on. You can say, oh, it's add on and made it a little bit better. Okay, cool. You didn't need it. Though. That's all I'm saying. You didn't need it to push the story forward. You didn't need to show that they love each other. I knew they love each other right away. We could tell from the moments they showed on screen together. Mm-hmm. Even her moving on with the new with Kit Harrington character and seeing Richard Madden for the first time. We know there they have something there. Uh... I'm just saying, bro, because this is for kids. And you're not. You're thinking about from a grown ass man. You're being selfish. You're thinking about from a grown ass no, man. No, I'm thinking from kids as well. It's, Judge, it, it at means 13, nothing. your parents are not gonna let you watch that shit. God, that's fucking. That shit is nothing. Well, that my, shit was. You literally asked mom yesterday. You asked mom yesterday. What'd she say? That shit was nothing. Then she said, "Man, that man." You mom literally said, "I don't know if I man, want my kids seeing that." You know, mom be saying them bullshit ass fucking. No, uh, it's fucking, just judging. You're not thinking about it. If you're a kid and you're going to movie theater for the first time, seeing with your family, you're gonna make you cover your eyes. 
I don't think your child should. The first her. time, yeah. I'll okay, make your kids should but have come for that, f- But for that five seconds, sure. Okay, but then guess what? After that, when we watch the movie again, yeah, you don't have to your your point is, nothing bad your kids to should it. have to see that at thirteen years old. What if you take an eight year old, nine year old to watch this movie? What? What if you take a ten year old to go watch the movie? Nine, ten years old. This is a Marvel movie. Marvel's popular for kids now. You take a nine, ten year old to watch Marvel Eternals. You're cool with your kids seeing that? Maybe because it's not, it's nothing. It's really it's, sick. They're really thrusting and naked, man, DeAndre. Come on, that's You're such a damn shit, liar, bro. You're not going to let your kid. That shit he's not a parent either. I'm not a parent Look, either, but he's not a parent. I mean, I'll let you tell. Y'all can comment down in the comment section below what your thoughts on that whole scene and whether it, you know. If the movie was rated R, it's a different story. Whether it's appropriate. The movie's PG 13. Oh, my. My point exactly. It's for 13 and uh, 13 and above. That's that the PG 13 set scene. But you didn't need a sex scene in the movie. You don't need it. But if you're just so what you're saying is the movie is PG thirteen. That is a PG thirteen. But it's also a Marvel. So therefore, anybody who watches the movie knows it's PG thirteen. We're talking so about if you do have a set scene, you're gonna get set scene. Nobody puts a sex scene. Guy, who puts sex scenes in Marvel movies, bro? It's a Marvel kid movie. It's a superhero movie. It's for a kids. first. It's a first. It's trying to break new boundaries, motherfucker. We don't need sex in kids movies. When the fuck did they say Marvel was a fucking kids movie? Hold on, Jay. Hold on. How did you grow up on this shit? What? Where'd you grow up on, on Iron Man? All this stuff. You watched this when you were a kid, right? I grew right? Up. No, on. shut the hell up. Let's no, answer the question. No, 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 no. Don't do that shit because no, dad actually got me. Okay, at what age? When I was a kid. Okay, my point exactly. So as a kid, you got into this shit. Disney had and, a. And, hold and, on, and, shut and, up. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. No, let me, let me finish oh this. And to be honest, that shit was way worse because guess what? I read the fucking comic books. And oh you know how goodness. fucking graphic them bitches were? I only started one. That was DC oh, Marvel. I was only no. started comic books. But look at this. And it was, oh, no, there were some Marvel ones. Those started ones. Those aren't all of them. But then my point also, look at this. There's a Disney. Theme park that has Eternals and the Marvel everywhere for who? That ain't even fucking 25 and plus, my nigga. That Disney theme park's for the kids. Uh-huh. So what the fuck are you talking about, my nigga, about, oh, it's for the adults. This is for the, it's still, we enjoy it because we grew up on it, but it's still for the kids. You look at anybody who's a Marvel fan that grew up on this shit. They were kids when they grew up on this shit, so they saw this shit as kids, and you grow up with so it. So wait, so now you're bringing Disney into this. Yeah, This Disney, is Disney's but property. Yeah, yeah, Disney, I could have shit on Disney Plus, like fucking, um, what's it called? I could have The Simpsons and shit. That's and such shit a fucking like reach, bro. No, That's no, such a fucking no, reach. No, but I'm saying Disney Plus has all this form of media that any kid They censored out the that bad has, episodes. The Michael mm-hmm. Jackson episodes go off that you can't watch Michael Jackson episode as a whole. The Michael Jackson episode's gone. Yes. Uh-huh, either way. And since that's a, that's because they own that Hulu shit. This is actually a Disney property. Disney made this property. This ain't since it ain't made by Disney Full. They just own the company now. They own the fucking the, the Fox and shit. Like either the way, Hulu. Either way, you tripping on that shit. Bro. No, all I'm saying is you didn't need it to make the push the story forward. If this was Blade, it's Red R. Okay, I say we had to walk out of Blade as kids because that shit was cussing too damn much. I, 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 I gotta get out of here. Last Jersey Money was no crazy. nigga because we cussing too damn much. Shit, no, because I've seen shit. I've watched movies. With you did not watch Blade. That's the first Blade you saw in the theaters. No, but what I'm saying Am is, I, no. What I'm saying is I've watched movies with dad when like motherfuckers cussed a lot. But when? Problem, what movie you see as a kid? Huh? What movie you gonna see as a oh, kid? Oh shit, nigga, now I gotta go back to fucking memory lane. There was no movie you saw the kid that was cussing like that. Mama, shit. you watch dad, you, mama, not let you, you watch that you, kind of you shit. You would be surprised. Yeah, Andre, at, at the, not at home, at the theaters. Blade 3 was the first Blade we had to see in theaters. Darn. We weren't old enough for the other ones. And we still weren't old enough for that one. Dad took us out the whole midway through the movie, or towards the end of the movie, and we had to get out of there because it was but custody you, too damn much. You forget, Imani was, to me, Imani, which is our younger sister, she was with but us. Also, it was too, he said it was too many fucking, the fuck, the fuck words. Imani Imani was with us. If Imani wasn't with us, he we was still together. Yeah, we were 12 years old when we came out. Imani was with no, us. That's you, the reason why he took us out of Yandre, the movie. That's such fucking bullshit. Horse shit. No, that's not poor shit. That's the le- legit shit. No, it's not. Why it happened. No, it's not, yes, bro. Yes, it is. We looked up to me because it was cussing too damn I remember the damn movie. We went no, to too, I'm older than you. How the fuck you remember more than I do? I'm older than you. you. By two years, nigga. How the fuck? Two that years. Nigga, I was old. I'm older than you by three years. No, you're two years. How old are you? Huh? How old are you? 25. Well, you can use fresh 25. Yeah, yeah. bitch. Shut the fuck up. Get the dude. fuck out of here. My point is this. Red, a movie like that, a movie with sex scenes, your parents gonna automatically hesitate. You should have to hesitate on a Marvel movie. This is built. This has been built for 20 years or 10, 15, 10 years plus off of... Ch- Watch it made for children. Children watch this shit. Children but, are fans of Iron Man. All that's these characters. Hold on. Children watch this shit. So guess what? Those children that watched it back then are grown ass adults now. But you're yeah. But you're still getting new fans who are children. Oh my nigga. Can you imagine a sex scene in Star Wars? Padme and Anakin love each other. We have seen sex scenes of you no know, Padme and Anakin love oh, each other. You're, you're right. You're right. We don't have set scenes in Star Wars, but we have Leia in a fucking slave dr- slave dress outfit. Hold on. Did Padme? Did Padme? Did we see uh, Padme and Anakin having sex? Huh? Did you know Padme and Anakin love each other? 
Did you know Padme and Anakin love each other through the movies? Well, I mean, with the writing that they had in the movies, you couldn't really tell, but... You were such a capper, bro. You were a capper, bro. Jolana, you're a capper, bro. Nah, you a capper. Bro, you know damn well that's not true. You know damn well you knew Padme and Anakin loved each other. Stop bullshitting. And now everybody's... And Padme and Anakin was everybody's dream, everybody's dream couple. Uh-huh. Everybody's like, oh, who that Padme and Anakin? And they didn't show no sex scenes. Uh-huh. If you if you have a character, if you show it, when well, she did a good job, she didn't need the sex scene. The sex scene was add-on. You didn't need it, though. That's what I'm saying. You didn't need the sex scene. But I'm ready to get off that shit down. We're going to disagree to agree to disagree. If it was a sex scene where it was showing some full-ass body, some shit like that, I'd be like, okay, this is too much. But showing that simple shit, which was five fucking seconds... That wasn't a problem. A little more than five seconds. Don't try to bullshit. Either, that was like okay, a minute it, long. It, it was not no damn minute. It was like a minute. It was, it was about less than, probably less than 30 seconds. Stop. But anyway. Hey, all look. I'm saying is, I'm thinking about the kids and the children. I know parents are going to be like, hey, I don't know how I feel about that being a Marvel movie. Being that this is this is something that I take my children to go see. Don't know it's superhero. It shouldn't be all the extra shit. If it's, if it's DC... Sorry, DC rated R property. Okay, that's cool. If it's a rated R property, I understand what I'm getting myself into. A P13, I'm not thinking like that. And I don't think parents at 13 want their kids to see sex already, bro. At 13, your parents don't want you seeing sex. Mm-hmm. Let's be honest. But I'll keep going, though, about this movie. Yeah. So you're going to be that type of parent when you grow up. All right. I'm being anyway, parent. Yes, that's anyway, a good parent, nigga. Um, <laughs> let's promote the world now. My father wants to show your kids any, every goddamn thing. Anyway, we don't move on from it. But comment down below your What's thoughts. What's your kids seeing sex scenes at 13 years old? Comment down below your thoughts on the on the topic and what your, your, whether you agree or disagree with that. But right. keep but on going. Keep on going. Let's talk about these characters. Yeah, so. I Icarus, mean, tight. Stood out. Tight. He was good. Felt like a super, super, probably Superman, man. Everything's a flying. I mean, he he did the laser beams all all day. Cause that's all he could do. But like, still, the power, the the, the speed, the strength. Um, he was tight, man. Icarus really just stood out on screen, man. Richard Madden in general, the, the character Icarus, not even just the superhero part, but like the just the humane part of him trying to like find himself throughout the centuries and find who he was and stuff like that. It was, it was a dope little story, man. I definitely you tell definitely tell. Like Johnny said, it took a lot from Man of Steel and the Zack Snyder Superman, but they did a great job, Which man. Which y'all hate, but okay. Um, they did a great job with Icarus. Uh, Makari, who's the speedster, she's deaf, like the, the character the and actress. the actress as well. Uh, I actually liked her character. I liked how she was. She was tight. You know, the the way they made her fast in the movie is like how Snyder, they the flat, her. The Flash and DC got to get some work done. I mean, yeah, it's like... Her shit was tight. She was moving fast. Her shit looked tight, though. I she mean, like, yeah. boom, pop combos and shit. She was putting in work, bro. I mean, Running through the water and yeah, shit. Yeah, she was and, tight. And I, and I like that. They just they depict her as a speedster. Where, as in, you know, where you watch Flash and other types that of shit's movies. Trash. Flash or, or just speedsters like Quitsilver in the, um, you know, the Fox Etzman universe. You know, you kind of show them in slow motion. You kind of show yeah. them from their point of view. Which I, I get that. I, I, would, I like to see that from time to time. Like, you get a, a little bit of perspective. Like, cool. a moment. But... You should also portray, show them being fast, like they did with Macari in this movie, um, which I thought was great. You know, um, <laughs> now the only thing I had a problem with was the old girl, with her, I, the actress. You over here talking about? I think Macari is faster than the Flash, or you know, better speedster. No. She might be because she's no, not human. There's no way in hell. Flash is still human. There's no way in hell. She's not human. There's no way in hell. How you know? But has she reversed time? I mean, she hasn't. Okay, we should do it. She hasn't done that. That's so what I'm saying. saying Flash, Flash, is, still, Flash, Flash is still Flash is still human. Flash, but Flash is naturally faster because he can. He taps into different speed forces. He but, actually can break through time. I'm not. I'm not arguing with you. I'm just saying like Flash is also human though. Still, she's not human. She's I mean, really but, created. But regardless, Flash breaks through time, so he's naturally. Fast. But how do you know she ain't like that? We. I mean, this, she just became. I mean, think about it. she could be fast. Also, we don't know. You only test. You only tested by how fat how fast you've been pushing yourself. Well, if that's the case, then you can tell old girl. Okay, uh, reverse time then. Maybe let's fit all the shit that just happened. Maybe I mean, maybe she, I'm a, I'm just saying she's compare Quicksilver, Flash. They're still they're human beings. I get that are that. E- enhanced. She's not a human being. She's a fucking machine that's created. So by that logic, she's not limited as much as those guys are. They're still humans. Uh huh. Okay. Interesting. Is she gonna age? Flash ages. He does. She doesn't age. He does. She's been around for 5,000. Look, all I'm saying is right Since now. BC era, nigga. You're right. You're right. All I'm saying is for right now, if you ask me which speedster I would rather have on my team, I'm not I mean, of That's course, fine. Flash is a no-brainer. If I'll take you, her. If you, I'll, if you choose her, then you, I'm you, taking her because she has long last. She ain't going to die. Okay. I'm going to choose person right now at the moment that can help me out and could break through time. That's fine. Uh, um, but, um, yeah, her character was tight, though, as well. Um, I thought the, the cast of a deaf actress... Was amazing as well. I did. I did that with Kong as well, so I had no problem with that. I thought that was cool. Um, Gimel- Gil- Gilgamesh. Gilgamesh was tight too. I actually enjoyed him. I thought he was cool, man. 
Um, you know, he's basically like the brute strange, just punching shit, going crazy. I mean, but even the moments when we don't see him, we see him with Athena and that connection that they have, um, which is a very good French, like it's not a love interest or anything, that's just a very good heart, uh, good true friendship and he really does care for which makes him leads him to, you know guys you guys watched it leads him to go to that isolated um they go to uh australia right yeah something like that it was some isolated i think it was australia I it, was remember. Like a, it was a desert right? yeah the desert and they basically lived there and he basically taking care of her his whole her whole life and his and like their lives i mean they're not dying but like, you know what i mean and it showed moments of him like you know cooking and like having just laughter and joy it's just, it just nice to see characters when they have their like their off time they just sit at the table and shit i enjoyed that when they were just at the table everybody's just laughing and talking and they even bring up iron man and cap and shit like that and mm -hmm. Icarus talking about he could lead the avengers and shit yeah i mean there, there's definitely um kingo which is kumail naranji whatever the, you know the guy indian guy he's he was great he was one of my standouts for the movie he actually has pretty dope powers too where he Forms like the energy blast and like the forms guns. Like, like guns. Um, I did have a problem with this character at the end because you know they're. Hold on, before you go to that, let's get the, let's go before we like, start with the more. I like how they use okay. the culture. I'm not, I'm not gonna cut you. I'm just trying to add that before you go to what you're gonna go to. Okay. I like how they put the cult with King. I like how they put the culture of like the Bollywood films. That's yeah. a very big thing, huh? But when I brought that shit up months ago and talking about oh he's a ball he's supposed to be a Bollywood character, you're like. You weren't, you weren't with. Well, it. I was curious to see how it was gonna play out, but not uh -huh. seeing it. I seen, I, okay. I've watched some Bollywood films before, but like seeing him, it, like seeing the character get like some culture, and like show like, oh, this is my culture, it's like that, like all that kind of stuff. It was dope. It was really nice to see that. So continue though. Being that I, I, I dated somebody who was part of that culture and stuff like that, so I seen like some Bollywood films before, and seeing that putting the MC film on the mainstream and, and a big time platform and a big theater, a, a big screen TV, a big screen audience. Um, it was nice to see that for people that culture so that's all i'm saying but go ahead and continue what you were saying okay well yeah kingo oh, with that? his character at the end i just hated the fact that you know he kind of was like deuces and you didn't really see him pop up i actually expected him to pop up in the middle of the fight at i the was fine i'm not popping up nah it that, made sense nah because this goes with, okay well we can go into our next our next topic thing about the whole who's, well, because, the, who's the villains well because the, the problem is is because you have these characters who've been so undecisive about whether to help out or not their whole lives and they finally have that choice where they're actually where a lot of them are actually making that choice now mm -hmm. and his character is still neutral i didn't like that because his character because they might okay let's be honest let's break it down like this then here Every character had been on the planet for a long time, right? And every yeah. character had different reasons for why they felt the way they felt. Cersei loved the humans, okay. right? Um, Fastos had a family, which mm -hmm. he cared for, so which is why he chose that side as well. Um, the dude that could control people's minds and stuff like that, he cared for the humans because he's like, why we could make them, we could make this a peaceful planet. Why are we helping? Why are we making it destructive and shit like that? So he was on that team. Who else was on that team? And you had the speedster who was like, she was in love with old dude and she kind of felt the same way. So that's for, that's, all those characters had a reason for why they felt the way they felt. Kingo's reaction was the same kind of like Icarus. He's like, I follow Icarus wherever he'll do because Kingo understands, look, I understand the, the bigger goal is if we need a celestial to create more life for others. Like, why we can't be selfish to think about ourselves and this planet. We have to think about these other planets that could be have the same kind of lifestyle, or like have other life built around our universe. Oh, so I understand his 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 point of view. His point of view is not because he has something to lose. He has something to lose. But either, these kids have something to lose. But either way, I'm expecting you admit, like at least like you know when they're all. Um, but what are you expecting to help do? What, what I'm saying, like at the end when like um, Cersei and all of them, like mm -hmm. you thought, oh shit, okay, like. You know, she gets stabbed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All of that. So you think it's kind of over for him. Like, they're not going to be able to do it. And then his character pops up, helps the team out. I expected something like that. Which, it's a bit cliche because it's been done. Well, that's also, you want, that, you want the but, good, bad but, aspect of a movie then. But, you know, I just... To say, oh, okay, all right, deuces, and then go be gone. It's just because I, I find that but stupid. No, because you want more of a good. You want a good bad. There's always a gray. There's not. There's not a good or bad. Like, if the guy doesn't have, I have no. I have no reason to fight. I don't. I don't care. I understand what this mission has to be. I'm not gonna try to hold you guys back and stop you guys from what you're trying to do. Mm -hmm. But I'm also gonna help you either. I have. I have my own agenda, which is okay with me. I'm, I'm cool. I actually like that. I'm cool with Kingo. Having his own agenda, saying like, I understand both sides. I'm playing Switzerland. I understand why you guys want to do what y'all want to do, but I also understand why Icarus has to do this, and we need the Celestials to create more life. That's why I, I understood that. I had no problem with him staying away and saying like, okay, this is my own personal view. Cause yeah. he he didn't help and he didn't hurt nobody. He just stayed neutral. Yeah, I was well, cool with that. Either way, I I thought it was. Stupid. And Sprite, she chose her side because she was like, I hate this lifestyle too. So it made sense why certain characters chose to help and want to be a part of stopping it compared to. Uh, Icarus and, and Sprite saying 
I'm not I'm not with this. We, what, I, what I'm trying to say is that all these characters eventually came upon their decision and made a decision by the end of the movie where his was still undecided. Because yet. they all had a reason for why they were standing what they stood for, though. He didn't have a... What was his reason for standing for what he stood for? What was his uh, reason for joining them? He liked you, man. He liked... He liked... Because he liked his career that he made for himself. But, nigga, he was doing just, that... He'd been doing that for generations. Made, and I don't know. Maybe he's just... Maybe he's just grown to love humans as well. I mean, shit. His, one of his, his fucking... Uh, thing is... What's it called? The person, no, that, yeah, that's the, true. yeah, person that walk, like hangs out with them all the time. He's a that's human. fine, but so, he also, yeah, he also understands there's a bigger goal. At, there's a bigger, there's something bigger than myself. I have to think about as well. Yeah, but, I get this, but there's a bigger, there's something bigger than me that creates more life. I'm not thinking, I'm not human, so I don't. But think what I'm, what I'm saying is, it, it, t- it comes to a point where, especially with superheroes, you have you have to choose either or. Not you really. Know, the, when, when have niggas stayed? Dr. Doctor Manhattan has never chosen. That's, Man, that's different. Dr. No, no, but think about, no, because Doctor Manhattan's bigger than humanity, right? Mm-hmm. The Eternals are bigger than humanity. They're not human. They may have human emotions at times, but they're not humans. They're not gonna die. They're gonna they're gonna start over again, rebuild somewhere else. They don't have. They're not thinking like how a human would think. They're not morals. The more mor- um, <sighs> mortals. Mm. Either way, I just thought it was stupid. I thought you should have came in. I have yeah, no problem with that. that I think that, I think you tripping. You, I think you tripping on that. Anyway, um, so we had that. Uh, the Celestials, like I said, I, you know, they had what's his name, Bill Skarsgård, uh, play one of them. You know, the one that was all evolved into like kind of like this humanoid type. I thought they, they ain't celestials, huh? That's a deviant. Or a deviant. Deviants. Sorry, a deviant. I, I thought I thought he would uh have been a more of a bigger factor, especially towards. The I could have more screen time, but I was, I understood. But his I don't think he was a villain either. But it's like what what is what are you here for then? Because his, his well his goal was to try to like get his people back, fix it for his people because his people got fucked fucked over. Yeah, but I just but what I'm saying is if you're gonna do that, you should have. It expanded more upon that with that character, especially towards the end, or made him a bigger play a bigger part in the end. I just felt like but who think, was he a threat to? Only uh, Icarus. Yeah, that's uh, it. He well, was with I Cersei. Mean, I mean, I mean, he con- I mean, considering the whole team technically, because he's kind of taking pretty much everyone's power. So that's true. But he also is cool with. He don't want the Celestials around. They basically created him. And they fucking left him to die and shit. Yeah, and that's created, what I'm saying. So, he, he, so he was cool with Celestials not being built. Yeah. So he would been helping Cersei technically. In a way, he'll be supportive of what their decision was. Either, right. yeah, you know I mean. But then, why was he fucking with uh, Athena? Then at the end, he was over here trying to kill her. Athena attacked his. Athena really went to cave trying to fight them because <laughs> she wanted smoke. Either way, and he wanted a power. I agree, he wanted the powers as well. Yeah. But I'm just saying, like, I honestly, I, I, I thought he was gonna have more screen time as well. But that's why I said earlier, and there's no one. That's what I'm saying. At the end, it was just more of he's just there to hold off Angelina Jolie's character just for you know, like a side. Yeah, I guess you could say that, yeah. Sure, it's like a little side... Um, but we don't have, we really don't have a villain in this movie. There is no villain. Yeah. It's just a perspective of how you feel. I mean, it is kind which of... Which I like. It is kind of dope because you can kind of know in the future, like, this could be setting up larger aspects in the MCU. I mean, for all for Galactus, he's known to be a celestial. So how does he... You know, he he's someone who could eventually um, come out of this, you know? Mm-hmm. Were you cool with Icarus uh, turning bad? Or being bad the whole time? You know, not really bad. I, not, 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 not bad. Have his own agenda, his own goals. I was fine with that. Me too. It, it made sense to me. I was, I was fine with it. I, I, the ending, especially with him flying into the sun, I was like, wait, did he, did he die or is he? Uh, but either way, because how I think they, he died. Yeah. Well, well. Why well, think about it? Yeah. About it. Well, either way, because um, you know, in the in the in the movie, they're talking about oh, find some more celestials or find some more uh, eternals or whatever. It, so, and they've done it to other planets as well you know other planets in that galaxy so technically not even the characters that died you might see them come back again because there was that no. scene where uh they showed uh Cersei you know she had that vision or she was talking to Aramesh or yeah or whatever his name is the celestial and he showed her how she was built and you saw all these other copies of them I that looked the if, exact same I think if you so, do that though, that's a cheap way that's a cheap way to the character I don't think they should do that that's a cheap way to the character yeah. but Icarus I think Icarus I don't know if Icarus is dead because they also said in the beginning where she said that how Kid Harrington told about how he flew around the, the, the sun and stuff like that or something like that yeah, some, yeah. so maybe that's part maybe that's like a little you know cliche that I don't, I don't know if he's dead because I like this character a lot and I thought him having his reason made sense I, I hate him at first like man what the fuck you killed someone I'm like what the fuck wrong with you but I understood why he felt the way he felt. He truly believed in what the Celestials was telling him. Like he believed that she's like, I live by this code, which is cool with me. I'm fine. Why I said there's no villain in this movie, really. It's basically just point of view of what you feel. Because if you're, some people say, hey, he's just doing what he's told to do. He's basically following those orders. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. If anything, Cersei and them are the bad guys. So I have no problem with any of the, the not having a villain, a true like 
Oh, that's the bad guy. You know what I mean? I'm cool with that because I feel it's his perspective how you look at it. Same with Kingo, how we disagree about Kingo. Y'all has his own perspective about Kingo, but I, I have my own I feel like, you know, I'm cool with the character being like, I don't care. I'm not against you, but I'm also not with you. I'm fine with that. That's very realistic, humanic. That's a very realistic way to take on things. Like, not everybody has to agree or disagree. I'm just I'm just here. I'm going to do my own thing. Y'all take care of that yourselves. I was cool with that. So, overall, no problem with that. Uh, another problem I have with this movie is the end. Um, you know, with the, their whole... Because you see, like, the states that are involved at the end, and you have such a large thing that's happening. And we ask this with all fucking movies. When you have these large events that are happening, where where are these people? Where are those people? So, my question is, where are the new Avengers? Where are... There's no new Avengers. Well, who? any superheroes on the planet, where are they when who? you see this massive shit happening? Who is there? Captain Marvel is fucking in space doing her own thing. Spider-Man, we don't know what the fuck Spider-Man's but, timeline but what is. I'm so, there's the... But what I'm by, saying is... By, judging by Endgame and how many motherfuckers was in that motherfucker at the end... You like Doctor Strange? You don't think Doctor Strange is, is like what the hell's going on here? What year does the movie take place in? I don't. You don't know. That's, that's, that's crazy. But though. I'm saying this could be during Spider Man, uh, Spider Man's situation, going into what Spider Man's going through. We don't know. I mean, we because think about if you think about a, a end game, Guardians went back to space looking for yeah. their doing. Thor is in space doing his own thing. So like, who's on the planet Earth right now? Black Panther's dead. So who's on planet? Oh, Black Panther ain't dead technically by the MCU, but but everybody's doing their own thing. So who's really on Earth to be on hell? This kind of shit. You have niggas like Rhodey. Which I know, I know, I'm not saying Rhodey is the person capable of hand, but at least Rhodey knows about it. It just seems like nobody knows. Because think about it. The fucking Avengers built this whole high-end fucking... That shit's gone. That shit was built. That shit's either, gone. Either way, they had this high-end shit where they, like, even whether it was Avengers, whether it was S.H.I.E.L.D., whether it was just the fucking government in general, where mm-hmm. they had all this global security, they had all this footage around the world where they're like, oh, okay, well, if this yeah. happens... All right, something's happening around the, this coast or this around this east coast or Pacific coast. Let's call the Avengers. Let's call so and so. Let's call this superhero. Let's call that superhero. And it just seems like, oh, okay. So it's taking that approach where you have this global thing happening at the end of the movie. Yet there's no other superheroes but, around. There's all the people because now we're not in New York or nothing like that. We're in a fucking middle of nowhere. Yeah, I, I, I get it, but I mean, it's, it's like we're it's, in New it's, York it's, and it's, fucking. It's like one of those things where like. You want to establish that Eternals is its own movie, so it's not going to include MCU characters, but it, at the same time, you're going to have this thing that's this large event happening. So now it's like, oh, okay, like, so there's no superheroes. But that, dang, there's no superheroes that exist in this universe besides the Eternals. But dang, we literally watched, we watched Shang Chi. We saw Bruce Banner's not on fucking. He's fucking somewhere else doing something else. Everybody's on. Everybody has their own, like with this Avengers. Arab, there's no Avengers, so everybody's pretty much going back to their own shit. There is no team to team call up. Who's the team to call up? There is no you team. You don't have it. But so and I'm, and I'm not. And the movie also, it's not like this is taking place in a big city like New York or L. A. or. Or something like it's not taking place in a big city, Connecticut or some shit. It's taking place in the middle of nowhere off a fucking volcano. So if anything, some shit's going down. What the fuck? You probably think, oh, the volcano's finna erupt. Okay, normal shit. Like I'm saying, like I'm not trying to think about it like that. I'm not trying to defend it. But I'm saying like that makes sense to where okay, volcano. This just happened on a volcano island next to the beach. It's like okay, oh, oh explosions and shit. Volcano coming down. Yeah. And mother, we ain't in New York. Like who the fuck you? Gonna, and who you gonna call? Call the Avengers? Who? There is no Avengers. There ain't yeah. no Cap. We just got <laughs> who? There's. I mean, you don't know at this point. That's I mean, all I'm saying. Wait, I'm cool with that Falcon, nigga. Falcon by himself with who yeah, else? I know. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. But there are superheroes. That but Falcon's exist. in New York. So what the fuck? Falcon gonna be doing in fucking going to a volcano? He probably like as a volcano. Who gonna tell about? Who gonna tell Falcon some shit going down? That's my point. There is no Avengers Initiative no more. Yeah. Samuel Jackson's in space. There ain't no Nick Fury. He yeah. in space. So I mean, but if, if that's the case, then it's just like okay. So these niggas do not care about Planet Earth anymore, which is terrible on, on their part. I mean, you you <laughs> don't care about Planet Earth. What the hell? Nick Fury went to get help for Planet Earth. Yeah, <laughs> but, he's gonna find help. Yeah, but who's protecting it right now? That's the problem. Ain't shit happening on Planet Earth but right not now. Not that you know, but anything to pop up. So yeah, but that's why Nick Fury went to get help because they but, knew that's we what, need more. The problem is, is like anything could pop up, but we can't do shit about it right now. Exactly, but because we need but, help. But but uh, and and as far as anybody taking over the planet right now, we're not going to have anybody try to take over because of timing, because of the fact that we don't have anybody available. But you know, like that's what I'm trying to say. Like you don't have they're they're not going to write any villain that's trying to take care of, take over the earth right now because it wouldn't fit with the timing of the fact that there are no superheroes. Which would what be you the, mean? Which we would had in reality be the perfect fucking time. We had that though before. We had um. A, a Jake Gyllenhaal's character with no Avengers. That's when he fucking came. Jake Gyllenhaal. And Mysterio. There was no uh, Avenger team. 
He's like, oh, no Avengers no more. We're good. Just Spider Man. Yeah. Same shit. I'm saying they have been, they have done villains that have come to try to take over the world, but it's like at the moment we're in right now, shit. I mean, Nick Fury will get some. No, they ain't gonna be okay. You might have villains, but you're not gonna have no galactic Thanos type of motherfuckers coming down right now to come take the damn like, Earth. But if you're the, but if you're people on the Earth, how would you know? Well, who's coming here? To, who, what do they want from here? That's gonna be a question. Like Nick Fury said, what do they want? Yeah. There ain't no fucking stones here. There ain't nothing that says. The, pa- the powers of being Earth can handle this shit. We ain't gonna bite nothing here to take no right now. In the words of Michael Caine, some people just want to watch the world burn. That's true. That's why we have Jake Gyllenhaal's Mysterio who got his ass by by Spider Man. Yeah. We have the Sinister Six coming. Yeah. We got Venom now coming. We got my folks coming. Okay. Um. So yeah, I mean that was another thing. Movie's tight. Though. As far as uh, yeah, and we we mentioned Kit Harrington. He's not in the movie that much. Um. But he does have an end credit scene with his character in the Black Knight. You know, you kind of know. I I actually told you this a couple weeks ago, where I was like, I can see him having his own like Disney Plus show. I can see a Disney Plus show based on the Black Knight. And cool with it. If you guys didn't know, or you know, you guys didn't recognize the voice at the end that's talking to him is actually uh, Mahershala Ali's Blade that's uh, talking to him, which I I find really cool. Be tight. You know? uh, I wonder how that's gonna play a part. And then oh, what's, I'm trying to think. The other end credit scene, you have Star Fox, you know, Eros, brother of Thanos. Played by Harry Styles. I actually think it's a nice cast. No, I'm not I'm not against it. I actually like it. Thought he was, you know. I mean, you, you only get a brief moment with them. But right. you're like, huh. Okay, I kind of I want to see more of how this you is probably going to probably get him for about t- five, six years. Yeah. Kind of like how uh, old boy was. Adam Warlock. Adam Warlock. Yeah. Yeah. Adam Warlock from now. So, But it's cool, man. I'm just, I, you know, it's always exciting to see the MCU keep building and keep on bringing great actors and new upcoming actors. People are knowing, like, oh, man, they're joining the MCU now. I never thought I'd see Andrew Jolie in the MCU, so like that's cool. It just it is dope seeing these characters come back around, and, like see the the universe grown. I think it's the first real film that we get. It's like very really cos cosmic, like you know beings that we don't understand. Times before time before time and stuff like that. So it's just unique and you know I thought they explained. Well, I thought they explained how they don't interfere very well. I like how they. I like another thing that they question like. Why the fuck are we doing this? Like, why are we letting them kill each other? Like, why? And they wanted to interfere. Well, like they sat there and said, "Oh, we're cool. Let them just kill each other." They wanted to interfere and help out, but they just couldn't do it. They weren't supposed to. So, but um, but I actually have a problem with that as well in a way. Good, because you know at the end they kind of go their own ways, and some people start to interfere. Like, who? Well, the guy the that does the mind. Control. Well, he was interfering already before. Yeah, but that's what I'm trying to say. So I'm like. Where, He's only one. Where though. were you at there during Thanos, Monica? If you over here feeling like you want to interfere with, the, with these people, I know you can get. I know you get. I know you can get. He can get zapped. There, uh, Chloe Zhao already said that none of the Eternals got oh. snapped. I think. I, I think because of the fact that they're Celestials and all that shit. I don't think. They but think about. Snapped. Well, think about it, though. He also went into the middle. No, he basically became like a monk. He basically went on his little like own little like journey and just like a jungle and had some people like there living with him, working for him, and helping him out when and trying to keep. He basically keep people safe that he could. And now he basically went MIA. Nobody knew where he was at. Yeah. So I got no problem with him not interfering. Saying, I think chapter. I think there were some characters that did interfere every now and then, but it's like, where was your ass at during Thanos, my nigga? Face those. Where was your ass at during Jim Crow, motherfucker? God, I don't know face. Face was chill, bro. He face doesn't give up on society, but he gave up on humanity. Yeah, he gave up on. He society. saw Hiroshima. He gave up on humanity. Yeah, he gave up on society too soon. Saw niggas in Hiroshima. Hey. Dying, but when niggas was uh, over here getting oppressed around the country, his ass said, "All right, I ain't doing shit." He could, bro. Mm-hmm. Well, he ass. couldn't do that shit, bro. Leave my man's alone. Bitch um, ass. I will say also, Sprite was one of my surprising characters. I really enjoy. I really like Sprite. He's like kind of hair when I just turned bad a little, but I really enjoyed Sprite. Well, because like you, it's it's one of those things where like you understand her character and like all yeah. Like, what she, she reminded me of the girl from uh, Envy with a Vampire, the little girl um, who like gets turned into a vampire. She can never grow up and shit like that. She needs to cut her hair. And she's like you know what I mean. Like kind of like Chris was Kristen Dunst. Yeah, Chris yeah. Dunst. She like basically can't grow and she's like stuck in this body. It's like that's how Sprite is. And Sprite's a child, so she's basically stuck in this. One way of living her life, and, and she kind of like has that Loki. You know, you get Loki vibes from. Yeah, her, you do because her powers are she kind of. She dope. She dope. She, she even does something that's similar to Loki, where she stabs. Oh yeah, no, yeah, which I was like, Tight. Loki did that shit before too, motherfucker. Tight. And also, um, she probably, I did. I wonder if she I, taught Loki it. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> I did. I did tell you, Andre. I thought some Eternals would die, and I was correct. No, you're bitch. You were wrong. You said there were about half. You said half the team was going to die. We lost. We lost three members. Icarus is a maybe. Gim- no, Gim- uh, okay, Gilgamesh, Ajax. I heard she's. I heard she got more DC or uh, MCU films. Though, I'm telling you because she you, might have more prequel. It might be some prequel shit. I'm though. telling you, dog. The Eternals, they might all come back just Not for that fucking them. reason. Okay, but they bring it back. I still right. She died this one. I mean, I do. I think it's bullshit because it's kind. It kind of like um, 
takes away stakes. It take yeah, it takes away the stakes. It, it takes away the emotion where you watch the first. And if I if I find out in the future that oh these characters there's all these other versions of themselves, but and I watch this movie again, I'm gonna be like okay that scene doesn't. But it doesn't it doesn't guarantee that she's gonna come back for future film. It could be like how remember how um what's his name that played uh, Crossbones. Yeah. Right, he said he was a sign from, he signed up for in game. We were like, oh shit, he's in game, he's alive again or some shit. And it was like a, a throwback scene. So, yeah. like, maybe it could be some shit like that. Like, they show like some throwback scenes or something like that for the future. Yeah. But she died, the little girl became a human, and Gilgamesh. Did she become a full human? I yeah, but she's, that's why she had to go to school now. She's but she, but she doesn't have the powers. No, sure that's, part of, that's part of her. She said, I can take your power and make you a human, make you mortal, but you're going to die eventually. No, she said she had enough power from, uh, the mind to thing. take to make her to, immortal. To, no, to make her grow. But I don't. No, know. to make her mortal. Where she'll die. You'll die. Yeah, but I don't want. She said, know. "Okay, she wants to die. She don't know. I have to. I'll die in the future. Yeah. I'm young. I'm a. I'm a start young. I'm an age. But you're telling. I think she has them powers. How you have powers still? If you're not. If you're not. You're not. A, you're not eternal no more. You're a human. You're mortal. The powers are gone, bro. That's part of the reason why she had to go to school and shit. I think she, why she was her, on the phone. I think, I think she gave her the power to age. No, but the DeAndre. To die, but to she told her you're gonna die. If you have powers, you wouldn't die then. She's gonna die. She's not eternal. Eternal don't die. She's gonna die. She's not eternal no more. That's why she was. Remember when she was on the phone, addicted to the phone, and she's like, "Oh, you're really addicted to that thing now, huh?" Girl, she was addicted to the phone. She's like, "I don't give a fuck about that shit." For uh, give me a chance, addicted to the phone. Yeah, huh. she's human. I wish with the school. Know. Comment down below your thoughts on that too. I, I want. I want to know if you guys. No, you told. I, I guess I'll see that. I'll see you late. I'll see you again someday. I'll yeah. come visit you someday or something like. She's yeah. a kid. Okay. All right. All right. So that's three deaths. I was right. I, I call four, but you said I was five. Close. I call five. But I was right. I'm close. Oh, it depends on Icarus. Icarus could be dead. Yeah. Either way. And Athena, uh, she she lived. But yeah. Okay. I like. I like three. I got three. Three. Yeah. I do. Either way, we didn't talk about Athena like that. Angelina, hey, Angelina was tight. Athena was tight in this movie. We're like, oh, right, right in this video, Athena was tight. Angelina was dope. It was cool because Angelina did not steal the show. Like I thought she would just be on screen. It was cool seeing Angelina, but like you know, it just Marvel's so big now. It's like, oh, we care about all this other shit too. But she was amazing on screen. Loved having her. She's a beautiful, great warrior. I like when she had those damn spurts where she just fucking went crazy and started like kind of kill everybody. It was tight. Um, I'm glad we got to understand why she was like that. Um, yeah. But yeah, we talk about the other characters. I mean, Cersei. She's she. Cersei, star. Cersei, Cersei's the star of the movie. Beautiful the woman. Lady. Um, Gemma Chan. Yeah, she bad. Great, per, great. Really care about humanity. Felt like Wonder Woman kind of had had a, had a Gal Gadot Wonder Woman type vibe when it came to her humanity. Care for humanity. Oh, okay. I was about to say. Okay. No, I didn't say power skill. Yeah. Okay, care for right, humanity. Right. Related to the first Wonder Woman movie, and yo, that's what it's like. She like that's what to me it felt like. Like okay. she really cared about the humans. You know, she was different from them. She cared about them and loved them and, and wanted to be like them and learn about them and and care for them. And she was a teacher. <laughs> Yeah, you're so right. yeah, okay. so yeah, I tried to give a chance as well. Uh, I'm trying to think of any other characters. Um, the dot guy with the mind control, he was he was he was solid. tight. He I was liked solid. him. I liked him more. I thought I would. I didn't know how much about him, but when he, when he whacked the girl, I was like, I was busting my. He ass was tight. Was and his 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 love for humanity, his love for just like coming trying to find his purpose. Like we're here to try to save these people, but we're letting them fight each other, kill each other. So like, and he had the power to change that. So I like that he came in. And even like, it was underrated, but there his romance with the uh, old girl, I thought that. Yeah, was I thought funny. that yeah, was I nice thought, too. I, I thought it, it felt unique. Yeah, it felt good. Um, and we already mentioned Makari, but yeah, I think that's everybody. Yeah, but yeah, Ajat. Oh yeah, Ajat Samahaya. She's the leader of the group initially. You know, she's the one who kind of instructs the Eternals. Still on look what to good. Do. Still beautiful. Oh yeah, Samahaya had been a bit um, since day. Her one. character power skills. She can you know heal everybody and shit. She wasn't like real main character like that. We got other characters, but she was basically like, the start off points like explaining shit, getting everybody going. So she basically led them for like generations, like beasts, like shit, centuries. Yeah. So it was tight though. Yeah, it was good to see. But, um, yeah, Eternals, like I said, man, I thought it was a solid movie. Definitely, it's one of those movies you definitely should watch for yourself and determine how, what, you know, your approach to it, whether you liked it or not. Um, for me, I think it's still a solid movie. I think it's a great MCU movie, and as far as where it can go, uh, in the future, you know, because a lot of the, a lot of the new stuff that we're seeing in the MCU is stuff that is going to be explored more. I mean, I'm telling you right now, we're probably going to have some movies down the road where shit takes place on different planets, like... That's how it's going to be. We had it already, though, with Guardians. Well, yeah, but I mean... But yeah, I, mean, I know what you mean. You know, but I, as far as, like, characters from Earth being on other planets as well, like, you know... Yeah. So, I, there's going to be some different kind of states. I mean, shit, we still got Kane the Conqueror. We got the fucking Deviants and shit and all the Celestials. All that shit we got to worry about in the future. But, um, yeah, this is a good starting point. I feel like Eternals gave me a lot... Um, to get excited about in the future of the MCU mm -hmm. and you know we know we're a month away from Spider-Man No yeah. Way Home so hey this is a good uh, what's it called in between 
yeah. as far as something to give me that boost going into it. But I enjoyed it. Yeah, me too. I agree. You said everything right. Yep. Um, but yeah, that'll be all you guys. Let us know down below your thoughts on Marvel Studios Eternals. Uh, did you enjoy it? Did you like it? Did you, favorite not, did you not like it? Yeah. What was your favorite Eternal? Um, Richard Madden for Superman? Question mark. Head ass. It's still Henry Cavill, goddammit. But if Henry Cavill can do it, then yeah, Richard Madden wouldn't be terrible. Let us know down in the comment section below. I'm DeAndre. I'm Javante. And this is a Dre and J review. Deuces. Thank <music> you.